and welcome to my channel and in this video is going to be another art tool yes another one um, over the last couple of months I've just amassed a few little bits and pieces whenever I order my pigments for my paint making I tend to order a couple little bits on the side just to make it worth the packaging price so without further ado so I'm going to mention some pigment uh, mostly because I found something very interesting with it uh, Jackson's wasn't selling the manganese blue pigment the other week, so I ordered it from Paul Nielsen website itself, which he produced it anyway. And there's something that I found rather interesting about this paint, this pigment. You can see on the side there, that actually says Windsor & Newton on it. Um, I'm not sure why. Maybe this was originally from Windsor & Newton and Cornelius bought it a little while ago. Who knows? I found that interesting. So now I'm going to jump in to my paint hoard. So first things which I purchased a little while ago were two tubes of quinacridone gold genuine. This colour is by Daniel Smith and they no longer make it. It's run out. They've replaced it with quinacridone gold PO49 and a different colour to stretch out a little bit. So still the original pigment in there. Um, new ones, but it's a bit different. This is the original, or PO49. So I thought I'd grab that. I've never tried it before, so I thought I'd give it a go. I've gotten better, I would say I've gotten better without mindlessly buying paint, but the next few items will discredit that. So purchased here. Uh, Turner's Watercolour Ultramarine Blue Deep. I've been doing a video on Ultramarine Blue comparisons and this one was pretty cheap so I got that. Along with the Old Holland Ultramarine Blue and the Rembrandt. Now keeping with Daniel Smith, I have purchased a few colours of theirs. One being Quinacridone Burnt Orange. I found this one interesting because I have a pigment similar from Sennelier, which is an old pigment that was discontinued in the Sennelier range, and I saw this and thought, oh, I'll give it a go, see what it's like. And it's a brown, ochre sort of colour. Now, the next items I'm going to talk about are problem items that I found with Jackson's, and I'm going to be emailing Jackson's about them. The first problem is a problem. The second one might be a nice surprise. So I ordered Sap Green by Daniel Smith. Now I ordered two tubes thinking this was the original made with quinacridone gold genuine. And I looked on the side of the tube and it's actually made with PO48 and a yellow. This isn't the original like I thought it was. It says on their, their website PO49, not 48. So there's some issues there and I don't know if I can be bothered to send it back. So I might just have a load of unused sap green. Now the next one may also be a labelling issue. However, it might be a happy mistake. I ordered manganese blue from Old Holland. A few weeks ago, manganese blue from Old Holland was discontinued. There is no more original PB33 in that brand anymore. As a replacement, they bought out manganese blue extra which is made from a cobalt pigment and something else. So I ordered the extra just to try and see what it was like compared to the original manganese blue. However, if you can try and see on this tube, I don't know if it's showing. There's no extra written on this tube, it just says manganese blue. So this very well could be just genuine old manganese blue, the last of their stocks which they just sent out. That could be a quite happy mistake. I will email Jackson's and find this information out. So next colours I ordered are from Old Holland. They are Shaveninger Black, Intense Black, Royal Purple Lake and Sap Green Extra. Now what I'm doing with my watercolours is I'm replacing a lot of colours in my palette with Old Holland colours now. They are my preferred brand to work with, they're my favourite brand. And I have some colours in there that aren't 
um, old cottons such as their Schmincke colours or their Winter and Newton. So any colours I can get cheap enough from Old Holland I will replace. I'm only keeping colours which I cannot get from Old Holland such as some of the Daniel Smith ones or if Old Holland ones are too expensive like their Cerulean Blue which is extortionate. So I'm changing them all over. Now speaking of palettes, I also purchased some cheap watercolour palettes to house some colours. My watercolours, as you saw from my collection video, are all over the place. They're in different palettes and they're everywhere. So I purchased some cheap palettes from eBay just to house them. So these are handmade paints here. And I've got a small palette like this with Schmincker in, one with Rembrandt, and one with Winsor & Newton and a couple of others in, just to keep it all separate. Next thing I ordered was these Sakura Micron pens. My current one from Faber Castell I think is starting to run out a little bit. I've noticed it's not flowing as quickly or as nicely as it used to. So I looked for some liners and they were on special. Unfortunately the single 5mm 0.5mm liner was out of stock so I ordered a small packet of them to try them out. They're supposed to be quite good pens, so I give them a go. I believe it's waterproof and light fast, according to this. The next two things I ordered was some sample papers. When I did my paper review, I tried the Moulin de Roy papers, and I found the cold press to be the best cold press paper of all the ones I tried. When I went back in and did the in-depth test with the hot press, I found it to be very bad and lifted quite a lot. The cold press from the initial testing didn't seem to have any of the sizing problems, so I thought I'd give it a go and see if it does do better. If it does, then I'll probably order this as my go-to cold press. It's quite nice for granulation. The next thing I ordered, I can't really remember much about it. This is the Artistico test pack. This wasn't available when I first did my watercolour testing. I believe here there's the extra white and traditional and the cold press. I'm going to have to look this up on Jackson because so I'm not sure quite what I've got here. There's extra white, traditional white. There are four sheets so I'm going to have to have a look at them. The next two things I ordered were dot cards. So despite the fact I'm not a fan, too much of a fan of Schmincke, I thought I'd try their dot cards. Now these are the, this is the entire range of 140 colours. So I thought I'd see what they're like, see if there's any that I'd like more and would use again. I'm not going to close my mind completely to Schmincke. They produce something which I can get from Old Holland. One thing I did notice with this, their dots aren't very generous. Some of them here, like the light ochre, which I noticed, is barely a dot. And the other dot card that I got was Daniel Smith. Now these dots are definitely more generous than the Schmincke. They're still pretty small for dots. Now the reason I got this was that I'm not looking at moving to Daniel Smith or anything like that. The lines that I'm interested in from Daniel Smith are their Primatet range, which are the paints made from mineral pigments such as Amethyst, Tiger's Eye. They're quite interesting and quite unique, and I'd like to give them a go. You can't get them on any other brand. There's no pigment information for them because they are unique mineral pigments. They also have here on this some of the like interference ones and some of the normal ones, such as Cadmium Red, that I could give a go. So I can't wait to swatch them. I'm going to swatch all the Horridan colours and the Daniel Smith colours in videos. I'm going to do it in live time, so live reaction to see what they're like. Because it would be interesting to see. And my thoughts on it as I, as I paint it. Now the next things that I purchased are impulse buys. When I placed my order, they said they had a special on watercolour books 
these were on sale. I think these were five or six pounds each. I think they were marked down. But it says on here they're eight ninety nine in the UK. I got them for about six pounds, so pretty cheap. I've not looked at these yet. So this is watercolor flowers. That's quite nice. It's like a tracing on here, so you can trace over onto normal paper if you wanted to keep to do a transfer. It's quite a nice idea. So quick, quick, quick. I purchased this because I don't actually have any painting books. And it was time that I bought some, I think. So yeah, that's quite a lot. I'm guessing these were the projects, and then this is the contents and some demonstrations and some talk about equipment as well. And I've been enjoying painting botanicals quite a lot lately, so I thought I'd uh, get that one. The other one I got, which was trees and woodland. Um, I'm not a major fan of painting landscapes, and thought this was um, a good idea to. Looks out of the landscapes I do paint, I do prefer painting woodland ones and sort of scenery as opposed to buildings. I'm not really you know massive fan of just painting trees, but what I give it a go. I believe these are done by both books done by British artists, I believe. So they're tracings as well. I'm not sure why they're tracings of these ones because they're just lines already, they're just trees. Something special about the tracings in these are not very detailed as opposed to the flower one which was a bit more detailed and again they've got their introduction talk about materials they by the looks of it they both prefer using Windsor and Newton brand being British I guess they would want to promote British brands as opposed to foreign ones it doesn't look as good as the flower one but it's still interesting enough I think I get some use out of it they also got recipes in there for colour mixes as well, so that's really good. So thank you guys for watching, that's all my things now, quite a lot of things I know, quite a lot to take in. So thank you for sitting through it all. If you've got any questions about any of the materials I purchased or want any more information on them, please let me know. So I shall see you next time.